As soon as you lift your foot from the accelerator pedal of your Tesla car, the car begins automatically braking. This is obviously thanks to the regenerative braking technology. If you check the energy consumption history of your Tesla car, you can easily see the regenerative mode of car operation. This is why it's possible to have one pedal driving in electric cars. You can apply the brake only for completely stopping the car or for emergency braking. For ease of understanding, let's assume an induction motor is driving the Tesla Model S. In an induction motor, you supply the input energy to the stator coils. When energized, the coils produce a rotating magnetic field. The RMF drives the rotor, which creates torque and allows the motor to drive the load. In an induction motor, the speed of the rotor is always less than the RMF speed. Please note down the direction of current induced in the rotor bars in this case. You can easily see here that the driving force on the rotor is in the same direction of the rotor rotation. Here is an interesting question for you. What if you can reverse this condition? Meaning, if the RMF speed is lesser than the rotor speed. In this case, the direction of the induced current in the rotor bars will flip. This also means that the force acting on the rotor suddenly flips to the opposite direction and the rotor slows down instantly. This is why you feel automatic braking action when you remove your foot from the accelerator pedal. The vehicle cleverly switches to regenerative braking mode. Now, the main question remains, how do you keep the RMF speed always lower than the rotor speed? Here comes the role of the inverter. The inverter will continuously be fed with the instant speed of the rotor. The clever inverter adjusts the frequency of the alternating current it produces and keeps the RMF speed lower than the rotor speed. As the rotor speed reduces, the RMF speed is further reduced. Here is a simulation result by the FEA software EMWorks. You can see how the RMF is lagging the rotor when the input frequency is reduced. The cool thing is that when the motor enters its regenerative mode, it acts as a generator and power flow is reversed. To store the generated power from regenerative braking, an additional power electronics converter is used in the inverter. The power electronics part performs the necessary functions to convert the generated electrical energy into a suitable form to store in the batteries. The power produced by the regenerative action is in AC format. In the power converter circuit, the AC power is converted into DC using rectification. After that, a DC to DC converter is employed to adjust the voltage level to match the battery voltage. This regulated DC voltage is connected to the battery system for charging. In short, during the regenerative braking, the vehicle's kinetic energy is converted into electrical energy and stored in batteries. Please see this comparison with a normal disc brake based system. In such systems, when the brake is applied, the entire kinetic energy of the vehicle is lost as heat. However, at low vehicle speed, the regenerative braking is not effective. To completely stop the vehicle, you have to engage the normal friction brake. This means at the beginning of the braking action, 100% braking torque would be supplied by regenerative braking. But at the end, normal friction braking will be in charge. This means the braking torque should switch from regenerative to normal braking seamlessly. This is known as torque blending. Regenerative braking can increase the range of your electric car by 10%. Before you leave, please don't forget to support us on Patreon. Thank you.